this is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain an action-adventure sci-fi film called Battle Beyond the Stars. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. While journeying in outer space, Sador, the ruler of Malmori, discovers the peaceful planet of Akir. As the crew scans the planet, they learn that its atmosphere is similar to their home. They also find out that Akir has no defense systems, and the only craft flying above it is an old weather ship. As Sador's ship approaches, the weather ship's crew attempts to communicate with them, but Sador responds by obliterating the craft. Soon, the huge warship enters Akir's atmosphere. Sador tells the Akira, its inhabitants, that he has come to conquer the planet. He warns them that he possesses a powerful weapon called the Stellar Converter and threatens to burn the planet into ash if they don't submit when he returns in seven solar risings. Before leaving, Sador orders his snipers to kill some of the inhabitants. He then asks a crew to stay behind and watch over the planet. The leaders of Akir immediately call for a meeting to discuss what they should do about the impending invasion. Fen reminds them that they haven't been in combat for centuries, and the Varda's teachings tell them not to fight. Zed, an elder who is nearly blind, suggests hiring mercenaries. The others point out that they don't have anything to pay the warriors. But Zed notes that mercenaries fight for different reasons. A young pilot named Shad volunteers to find warriors willing to help them. Zed allows him to use his ship, which is equipped with an artificial intelligence tactical system named Nell. For his first mission, Zed instructs Shad to find the station of Dr. Hephaestus to get some weapons. As soon as he flies out to space, the Malmori fighter tasked with watching over the planet pursues him. As the fighter ship fires at Shad, Nell activates the weapon system and instructs him to shoot back. However, Shad doesn't want to shoot out of fear that the Malmari will learn about their plans, so he decides to outrun the fighter ship. Not long, the fighter ship stops chasing him because the mutant crew was only ordered to watch over the planet. One of the crew suggests defying the orders, but the other one reminds him that Sador is now wearing the left foot of the last man who violated a direct command. Shad soon reaches Hephaestus' station, but nobody responds when he makes contact. When he walks in, a cart takes him to the lab, where he meets Nanelia, Hephaestus' daughter. Nanelia thinks he's an android that needs repairs, but Shad clarifies that he's human. Nanelia is surprised to find that he's warm-blooded, since she hasn't seen an organic life form other than her father. Shad notes that he came to ask for Hephaestus' help but Nanelia warns him that her father is no longer the same person Zed met long ago. Upon meeting the Hephaestus, Shad discovers that he no longer has a human body and he's only kept alive by a life support system. Hephaestus stresses that he can't help the Akira because their planet is already doomed. Instead, he intends to keep Shad in the station to become his daughter's mate and points out that it will be a better fate than being enslaved by the Malmori. Later, Nanelia apologizes to Shad for her father's decision. She's concerned that Shad will get killed when he fights back against the Malmori. After a while, Shad tells Nanelia about the sights and wonders in his home planet and other galaxies. Nanelia gets intrigued because she has only scanned information about different planets from the databanks, but she has never experienced them. Shad then tells her about the Huddites, a race of people who only acquire their immune system after five cycles. Most of their offspring die because they never develop immunities. But the Huddites still breed because of their breaking out ceremony, where they get to see their children break out of a protective sack and carry them in their arms for the first time. Nunelia realizes that Shad wants to complete the mission, even if it means his certain death so she orders an android to short-circuit the grid that prevents Shad from leaving the room. Before fleeing the station, Shad asks Nanelia to come with him and help them fight against Sador, but Nanelia can't leave her father. After contemplating Shad's words, Nanelia decides to board her ship and follow Shad into space. 
Nanelia tells Shad that she didn't bring any weapons, but she has an analyzer that can predict attack modes to help them develop a defense plan. Shad tells Nanelia to meet him later at the Lambda Zone as he continues to find mercenaries. In the Malmori ship, an aide tells Sador that the leaders of planet Umatil have pulverized their emissary in response to his ultimatum. Sador vows to decimate the entire planet and leave no trace of it. As his journey continues, Shad comes across a freighter ship being attacked by space jackers. The pilot, Space Cowboy, doesn't have any ammunition to fight back, so he asks Shad for help. Shad hesitates because he has never taken a life before, so Nell points out that the Varda teaches that they can take life to save a life. Nell locks in on their target, but Shad refuses to blast the ship from behind, so Nell fires on her own. Shad then fires at three more jackers, attempting to steal the freighter's load. After the battle with jackers, Shad attempts to recruit Cowboy, but the man declines and points out that Sador has never lost a war. Suddenly, Nell tells them that she's receiving a transmission from Umatil, notifying them that the Malmori has arrived. Shad and Cowboy view the transmission on the screen, showing the Malmori shooting the planet with the stellar converter. Umatil turns into a bright hot star after being hit by the converter's rays. The Cowboy reveals that Umatil was his customer, and they had purchased 10,000 mock lasers and 40,000 charged snides. He offers the weapons to Shad and notes that the Umatil has already paid for them. However, his people don't know how to use them, so Shad asks the cowboy to teach them. The cowboy agrees after being reminded that Shad saved his life. Nanelia arrives in the Lambda Zone, but she gets caught in a trap. Cayman releases her from the trap, but he takes her captive in his ship. Nanelia suddenly feels a burning sensation when crew members Urim and Thumim approach her. Cayman explains that they are thermal life forms known as Kelvins, and they communicate in degrees of heat. Cayman then reveals that he intends to sell Nanelia as a slave. Nanelia informs him that she's recruiting mercenaries to defend Akir. Cayman is not interested because Akir has nothing to offer him, but he suddenly becomes furious when Nanelia mentions Sador's name. He sets Nanelia free and heads for Akir upon learning that Sador is alive. Meanwhile, Shad gets pulled into the ship of five clones, introducing themselves as Nestor. Shad threatens to shoot them, but Nestor takes control of his hands and points the gun to his face. When Shad puts down the gun, Nestor notes that they know he did not intend to shoot because he's not a violent life form. Nestor discloses that they've been monitoring Shad's activities and wishes to help him without asking for anything in return. Nestor reveals that they share a collective consciousness, and the five clones in the ship are just a few of the facets scattered throughout the universe. They become bored and lonely, so they want to help the Akiras defend their planet against Sador. Back on Akir, the mutants watching over the planet decide to descend on the planet to abduct a woman. After Shad leaves Nestor's ship, Nell advises him to go to Nascosto, a hideout for outlaws and mercenaries. When Shad goes to the planet's underground city, the only mercenary he finds there is Gelt. When Shad asks what happened to the other inhabitants, Gelt explains that the other planets in the galaxy raised an army to eliminate them. He only returned to Nascosto because every planet in the galaxy has put a bounty on his head. Shad tells him that he needs mercenaries, but all he can offer are food and shelter. Gelt points out that he accumulated substantial wealth from his previous jobs, but he's interested in Shad's offer because he wants to be on a planet where he can safely roam. Later, Shad encounters a small ship trying to engage him in battle. Shad contends that the ship is no match for him, but he has a hard time trying to shoot it. As he chases after the ship, Nell warns Shad that the ship is playing with him and it's trying to draw him closer. Soon, the ship gets behind Shad and shoots him with a light beam. Nell informs Shad that there's no damage to his ship because it only shot him with soft light. The pilot soon sends him a message, introducing herself as Saint Exman of the Valkyrie. 
She is eager to join the fight against the Malmori, because it's traditional for the Valkyrie to leave home and fight in numerous wars to prove themselves. Shad, however, views her as a nuisance and thinks that she can't be of any help because of the size of her ship. X-Men contends that her ship is one of the fastest in the universe, but Shad turns her down. Shad soon gathers all the mercenaries in the Lambda Zone and introduces them to each other. Despite being rejected, X-Men follows the group to Akir. When they get close to the planet, the mutants guarding Akir detect their presence, so it tries to flee. As Gelt pursues the mutants, the woman they abducted messes with the controls to prevent them from fighting back. The mutants lose speed, allowing Gelt to obliterate them. Soon after they land, Nanelia comes up with a strategy to defeat the Malmori. She points out that their five fighting ships are no match for the Malmori, so their only chance is to disable the Stellar Converter. They will have the opportunity to do it when the Malmori ship lowers part of its force field to fire at the planet. The Malmori won't bring out the converter until it eliminates all threats, so they have to get rid of the ships protecting it as soon as they engage them in battle. Later, the Akira digs trenches using a vibrating crystal to prepare for the battle on the ground. The Malmori flagship tries to contact the mutants assigned to watch over Akir, but they get no response. The aide surmises that the fighter ship must have been shot down, but Sador points out that the Akira has no ship capable of battle. The aide notes that somebody must have helped them, but Sador is confident that no one is stupid enough to fight against the Malmori. Soon, the Akira crystal starts vibrating to indicate that the Malmori is approaching the planet, so the mercenaries board their ships to prepare for battle. Not long, X-Men contacts the Malmori flagship and introduces herself as the protector of Akir. Malmori fighters start pursuing her, so she leads them toward an asteroid. The Malmori fighter crashes into the enormous rock, but X-Men manages to pull away. Later, Kamen tries to fire at the flagship, but fails to hit it. After Gelt eliminates a few fighter ships, the flagship fires a nuclear missile. When the missile goes over Shad, Nell warns him that his only chance to survive is to outrun it. Shad heads towards Sador's flagship, but it remains intact after the blast because of its force field. When Gelt tries to engage the flagship, he gets hit and crashes to the planet. Sador soon sends the ground units to attack Akir, so Cowboy prepares the men to defend their planet. Cowboy and the Akira manage to force the Malmori to retreat with only a few casualties but the Malmori soon hits them with a sonic attack to impair their ability to fight. Their attempts to shut down the sonic weapon fail, so Cowboy instructs them to retreat. As the death toll rises, Cowboy thinks of a way to disable the sonic tank. When the Kelvins approach him, Nestor surmises that they must be volunteering. Nestor notes that the Kelvins have no ears, so the sonic weapon would have no effect on them. The Kelvins sneak up on the Malmori soldiers and get in front of the sonic tank. They direct their heat towards the tank to render it useless and vaporize the soldiers trying to attack them. The two Kelvins drop unconscious to the ground after using all their energy, so the Akira brings them to the protein tank to recuperate. With the sonic weapon gone, the Akira manages to shoot down most of the Malmori ground units, but one of the fleeing soldiers kills Zed. Nell soon hears about Zed's death and informs Shad, so he and the mercenaries return to the planet. When X-Men arrives, she brags to Shad about how she successfully led a fighter drone toward an asteroid, but Shad scolds her for treating the battle like a game and points out that it has resulted in many casualties. X-Men apologizes and explains that her people's creed teaches them to live fast, fight well, and have a beautiful ending. In response, Shad exclaims that no ending is beautiful. When Gelt succumbs to his injuries, Shad instructs the Akira to prepare a meal and bury it with him because it was part of their deal. Sometime later, Nestor reveals that they've allowed one of their facets to be captured by the Malmori so they can spy on them. Sador asks the captured clone for information about the ships in Akir, but Nestor refuses to tell him anything. Sador's surgeon, Dako, tries to torture him for the information but the clone immediately dies because Nestor has a low tolerance for pain. Sador instructs Dako to sever the clone's arms and attach it to him. After the operation, Nestor uses his ability to control the clone's arms to make Sador slit his own throat. However, 
Dako grabs the hand and immediately cuts it off. Sador soon launches a full-scale attack on Akir, so Shad and the surviving mercenaries return to outer space to defend the planet. The mercenaries manage to eliminate a few fighter drones, but Nestor gets hit when he flies too close to the Malmori flagship. Before he could crash, the Malmori decimates his ship. Moments later, Sador brings out the Stellar Converter and lowers the force field to prepare to fire the weapon at the planet. X-Men crashes her ship towards the Converter, but she slips out on an escape pod before the craft slams against the weapon. Sador orders his men to fire the Converter, but they can't activate it due to the damage. When the Melmori fighters surround X-Men's pod, she remarks that it has been an enjoyable fight. After the drones obliterate the pod, Shad recalls the Valkyrie's motto, about having a beautiful ending after a hard fight. Sador instructs all drones to retreat behind the sun, so Cayman allows them and challenges Sador to face him in battle. Sador notes that he once thought he had already annihilated Cayman's species. He accepts the challenge and vows that he won't fail to exterminate him. Although Cowboy's ship is not equipped for space battle, he decides to join the fight. He hits several drones, but he eventually gets shot and crashes into Akir. Shad recounts that Cowboy was unwilling to fight when they met, but he decided to join them in the end. A while later, Shad and Nanelia witness Cayman perish when he attacks Sador. Shad tells Nanelia that he must go after Sador because he will only return with more ships if he escapes. Shad shoots down the drones protecting the flagship, but his spacecraft gets hit and sustains heavy damage. Nell fails to recognize him when Shad gives her an order. Nanelia checks the system and discovers that her memory banks are no longer functional, so Shad switches to manual control. Later, Sador instructs his men to pull Shad's ship into the tractor beam and take the occupants alive. As they get pulled into the ship, Shad programs the ship to self-destruct. Nell tells Shad and Nanelia to get into the projectile so she can eject them before the ship explodes. Soon after Nanelia and Shad flee, the ship explodes while attached to the Malmori flagship. After watching the flagship burst into flames, Nanelia laments all the lives lost in the battle. Shad tells her not to worry because the Akira believes that lives only end when everyone they touched are gone. He assures her that they'll always be with them because they have become part of Akir. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.